As soon as the NDA was lifted, no damn could stop desktop-grade KB Lake processors from flooding into your subscription feed. And to be honest, I was feeling a little left out. Let's find out if KB Lake is worthy of being your new baby lake. Oh, that's bad. Just in case you've been living under a sandy bridge for the last year, KB Lake processors are the talk 2.0 of the somewhat capricious tick-tock-tock -tock cycle that Intel has decided to undertake recently. They call it the PAO cycle instead, which stands for Process, Broadwell, Architecture, Skylake, and Optimization, KB Lake. Though, as far as I'm aware, Intel's got a second optimization coming up, codenamed Coffee Lake for you caffeine junkies. So we have kind of a PAOO -O now, I guess. I'm not sure, moving on. Intel's seventh generation line of processors features the same 14 nanometer FinFET process as its Skylake predecessor, with improvements including, but not limited to, faster clock speeds, higher overclocking potential, better graphics architecture for 4K video playback, HDCP 2.2 support, which is high bandwidth digital content protection, meaning you can't copy protected media that meanders across connections, and you may think, well, that's bad, what if I want to? But at the same time, you can't watch anything that's protected if you don't have it. And I'm rambling, I'm sorry. There's also improved high efficiency video coding encoding, which includes 10 bit 4K resolution at 60 FPS. And you may be thinking, why do I care? I have my own dedicated GPU, I'm not using some onboard graphics like a goddamn peasant. But remember, this technology spans across all 7th generation Intel processors, including the Baby Lakes. This is the only processor released at this time that will support streaming Netflix at 4K to your desktop but you will also need Windows 10 and Microsoft Edge, so bleh. If you're setting up a home theater PC strictly for streaming videos and watching content, and you want to hook something up to your fancy 65 inch 4K OLED TV, there you have it. You can utilize up to 16 PCI 3.0 lanes on the CPU and up to 24 from the chipset. Last but not least, it will support Intel's upcoming Optane storage solution, which is kind of like a chunky ass cache that's meant to speed up things like boot times and application launching. But there's not a lot of information yet, so I'll shut my mouth before I look dumb. Or some nice things to note, only Windows 10 is officially supported on KB Lake. The K on the processor SKU still signifies that it is unlocked and therefore overclockable. And as usual, the unlocked processors do not come with stock heatsinks, which is fine because you don't want one of those anyway. These KB Lake chips sit comfortably in the Z270 motherboards, but if you've already got a Skylake system, you don't necessarily need to swap that out. KB Lake chips will work with any LGA1151 motherboard, and they still use DDR4 RAM, so you can save some money there. If you've already got a Skylake system, you may wonder, is it worth the upgrade? And we'll discuss that in a second. No. I don't have a Skylake chip for comparisons, but through my research, I found that the performance differences between the Skylake chips and their KB Lake equivalents are smaller than... Never mind. On the subject of clock sizes, let's talk about overclocking. I'm using the i7-7700K, a 4-core, 8-thread cutie pie, and I see a lot of reviewers get this chip to 5 GHz stable, and they'll say it's an engineering sample, or a reviewer sample, or a random CPU you can grab straight off the shelf. But I always assume they got something hand-picked, because I've never had good luck with overclocking anything. However, Intel has made me eat my words here. This is the first processor I've owned to hit that 5G spot, and boy does it feel good. However, I had to push the core voltage up to about 1.375 volts, which brought me to some alarmingly high thermals with the Kraken X62 cooler. What? No. A. Don't you say it. Clock block. Ah! Let's talk performance. As I've said earlier, I don't have a Skylake system for comparisons, so I'll be pitting this head-to-head -head with my previous rig. We've got an i7-5820K on the MSI X99A SLI Plus motherboard with 16GB of DDR4 RAM at 3000MHz with a GTX 980 Ti Amp Extreme from Zotac. In the opposing corner we have the i7-7700K on the Asus Maximus 9 Hero motherboard also with 16GB of DDR4 RAM at 3000MHz and a GTX 980 Ti Amp Extreme. All tests were performed at 1080p at max settings with anti-aliasing and VSync off. Rise of the Tomb Raider on DX11, Shows little to no change from stock settings to overclock, but KB Lake reveals an FPS advantage of a whopping 2. GTA 5 reveals some modest gains with overclocks, the 7700K gaining about 3% on average, and the 5820K looking at a boost of about 5%. KB Lake average frame rate beats out Haswell by 6 to 8 FPS, but both chips perform fairly well here. Shadow of Mordor is next on the clocking block, and we see the world's most boring results, with everything being almost the same from chip to chip, clock to clock. City Skylines is a test I'm not so fond of because of all the variability between circumstances, but in my benchmarks I found that the 7700K pulled 5-10 to 10 FPS more than the 5820K. 
Between all the gaming benchmarks, it's fairly safe to say that most games prefer higher clock speeds over number of cores, assuming you have at least four of them. Fire Strike scores showed lots of numbers. The 5820K gained a 16% boost on the physics score with its 4.2 GHz overclock from stock, while overclocked KB Lake only gained about 5.7%, but the 7700K beat out the 5820K on almost all accounts here, even if by an incredibly small margin. Moving over to Handbrake, we see Haswell shine bright, encoding a 1 minute video with almost no compression in 3 minutes and 23 seconds at stock, and 3 minutes flat with overclock, while the 7700K completed the same task in 4 minutes and 37 seconds, and 3 minutes and 31 seconds at stock and overclock respectively. And lastly, we'll take a look at Premiere Pro, and these results were almost as surprising as my last trip to Bangkok. Almost. We find that the 5820K renders a 1 minute clip with 2 passes at 4K resolution in 3 minutes and 47 seconds at stock, and 3 minutes and 19 seconds with the overclock, while the 7700K eats it alive, encoding the same video in 2 minutes and 10 seconds and 2 minutes and 1 second from stock to overclock. This one didn't make too much sense to me, so I ran it a few times over and reached consistent results, so... Conclusion time. If you've got a processor that's a few generations old like Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge, you could see some pretty nice benefits. But take this with a grain of salt, since gaming depends heavily on application optimization, and in many cases the GPU tends to take on most of the workload. On the flip side, games like City Skylines eat processors for breakfast, so depending on what you play, an upgrade may very well be worth it. If you've already got a Skylake or Broadwell CPU, it's more of a parallel investment than an upgrade, so unless you're aiming to burn money for little to no reason, or you need another computer for whatever reason, you don't need to explain anything to me, I skip out on this one. So that's all I have to say about that. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you've got them, or if there's something you'd want covered in a future video, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, my name is Steven, and I am a little dim. Bye bye. As soon as the NDA was lifted, no damn could stop desktop grade KB Lake processors. Press enunciation. If you're setting up a home theater PC strictly for streaming videos and watching content, and you want something to hook up. hook up something. something to. what? <laughs> We've got an i7-5820K on the MSI X99A SLI Plus motherboard with 16GB of DDR4 RAM at 3000MHz with a GTX 980 Ti stream from Zotac and. I stumbled at the end. i7-5820K on the MSI X99A SLI Plus motherboard with GTG... What? That's not what I have in my script. Why did I read... Okay. The MSI X99A SLI Plus motherboard with G... I did it again! <laughs> and in the opposing corner we had the i7-7700K on the ASUS Maximus 9... But shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm the i7-7700K on the ASUS Maximus 9 Hero motherboard with also with 16 gigabytes of DDR proof. Balls. I feel like uh, one of those auctioneer guys, even though I'm doing pretty bad at it. Maximus 9 Hero motherboard with also with 16 gigabytes. Gigabytes. This is gonna be a long night.